Right now, though, I want to deal with an issue that could potentially affect many of us. There was a big fire down in Christchurch uh, in that scrap metal yard. Quite shocking footage um, on the telly of that fire. And there have been a few big fires later. But as you know, uh, or you may be aware, the Firefighters Union is taking industrial action. Um, and does that mean we're more at risk from fire? It takes a fair bit, I would suggest, to get um, firefighters off the job. But this is perhaps an indication of their frustration as they've been um, negotiating for better pay and conditions or resources for quite some time. Uh, to find out what is going on, we are joined uh, now by... The head of the firefighters uh, union, or, or spokesperson for the fi- spokesperson for the firefighters union, um, Joanne Watson, who insists I call her Watty. Watty, welcome, uh, welcome to the program. Nice to have you with us. Oh, have we got that up? Yeah, we have got got her up. Jo- uh, Watty, how are you? I'm good, thank you. All right. Look, first, I just want to get a couple of facts straight. When we say firefighters are going on strike, is this volunteer firefighters or all firefighters or just one segment of them? It's the career firefighters. We're the NZPFU. We represent career firefighters. It's 111 dispatchers, our volunteer support officers, those in risk reduction, the trainers, those in health and safety, and a whole lot of raft of other work within FEMS. So all of those workers are walking off the job today. Right. Wattie, how many of them are there? Uh, we've got about 2,000 members. Yep. And we, we represent almost every career firefighter in the country. All right. Now, walking off the job means they are not going to jump in the red engine and go and put out a fire if there is one, or that might just take a little bit longer? No, our members will be walking off the job. If they're at a job, if they're responding to emergency when 11 o'clock ticks over, they'll they'll continue there and do what they would normally do and finish it up. But if they are not, at 11 o'clock, they will gather at their fire stations and all the other members will gather with them and they will walk down the road. They will not be responding uh, for that one hour. Okay, so it's only one hour that they're off the job, right? So it's not really like we just cross our fingers and they'll be back. No, that's only one hour. And Mm. uh, we've given notice of a series of one-hour stoppages Mm. over the next few weeks. So in some ways, I guess... You are protesting what you would see as a lack of progress in these negotiations, but you're not pulling the whole house of cards down with you. This is more a demonstration of your upset than, if you like, um, really getting rid of the, the vital services you provide. Yeah, the firefighters and the rest of our members um, don't want to do this, um, but there is no there is no other tool in the toolkit really to try and make some progress this is uh, it is a protest as you say but it's a very grave protest um and you mentioned the Christchurch fire inferno actually the other night and that's a classic example of why uh our members are taking this extraordinary action they uh, at that fire the first truck that arrived broke down the aerial appliance broke down uh later another truck broke down uh we had firefighters on that site battling the fire for hours and had already done 100 hours in, in the past seven days. Uh, those are the issues that are really uh, prompting this action. Uh, while they're there, they were subjected to um, hours of toxic smoke mm. and uh, World Health has uh, designated the occupation of firefighting as carcinogenic and yet FENS won't address that issue in the collective bargaining either. So there's a whole range of issues that firefighters are feeling particularly devalued and disrespected about, and uh, FENS is not listening. So uh, the, this is the type of action that we have to take. Okay, uh, if you're going to boil it down to straight pay, what sort of percentage increase are you looking for? So we've put a amended offer to them last week where we withdrew some claims and we packaged some claims. But on the straight um, wage claim, uh, we've asked for uh, for the bulk of our members 4.5% for the 21. So our members haven't had a pay increase since 1 July 2020. So we've asked for 4.5% in 21, 6 per- uh, 7% this year and 6% for next year. Okay. All right. That doesn't sound uh, unreasonable given the rate of inflation. Where in reality would the money for that pay increase come from? 
So FEMS is primarily funded uh, by the fire service levy, um, but we, we think that there is, they've got uh, 600, and they, they collect about 640 million in a year. That's an increase of 40% over the last five years. Uh, they certainly have the money, it's where they're spending the money. And I'll just give you a bit of an example. Yeah, but that's not your business, so, is it, Joey? And that's not the union's business. That's management's business. Oh, it is our business if it means that they're not, uh, they aren't spending it on the proper trucks and equipment and staffing. Absolutely, it's the business. And it's also the community's business. It's also the volunteers' business. Uh, Fence has lost its way. While it's been driving down career numbers and, and it hasn't bought new trucks and it hasn't bought one new aerial appliance or anything like that, uh, it's been increasing its corporate staff um, threefold. So it is our business when there is mismanagement of funding, and it is essentially public funding, albeit through a fire insurance levy. Yeah. What do you, uh, you have an hour off uh, the hour industrial action today. What's next? Well, we're hoping FENS comes back to the table. We've been in a, uh, which they agreed, a private mediation process that was... Um, uh, endorsed by the Minister, and uh, we are hoping they come back to the table and keep talking to us. Uh, it's all we can do. All we can do is keep talking and keep working and keep uh, trying to find a resolution, and both sides have to compromise. That's what happens in bargaining, and uh, we need to get the job done. But th there won't be a settlement unless there is agreed um, uh, safe s uh, staffing levels and agreed processes for the proper procurement of uh, trucks and equipment and the maintenance of those trucks, as well as recognition of the occupational illnesses and trauma that uh, our members experience in undertaking their work. I hear you. Uh, Wadi, I thank you very much indeed uh, for your time this morning, and we will keep in touch. That is uh, Joanne Wadi Watson from uh, the Firefighters Union. They're taking a one hour um, walking off the job for an hour today as they continue uh, negotiations for improved pay and conditions. Um, so be careful. Kids don't play with matches today, I think would be a good idea. That's a good idea any day, in fact, uh, actually, isn't it?